It was October 29, 1998. A big hurricane hit Honduras. About 7,000 people died. Almost everything we knew was destroyed. And one day I heard a story about a crazy missionary from the U.S. who came to try to help. And this guy I met was Alan Winter. And uh, what he did, not knowing what to do, he got to a hotel. He learned that uh, many missionaries were stranded there. They didn't have any money. They didn't have anything. And he decided to pay the bill. Nobody knew that happened. That was amazing to me. We worked in La Ceiba, where I used to live. We worked in Olanchito doing church planting. From Olanchito, we moved to Hocon. And from Hokan, we moved to Jodo. We're just going around doing church planting, leadership development and training, and doing what I call servant evangelism, just, just loving people and helping them with their needs. And one day, while we were there with the team, I learned that there was a people's group called the Sikakes, or the Tolupan. And I shared that with Alan. He decided to do something about it. We heard the story of this Tolpen man that he had a sick child. And as he was going through the mountains, he went through Pacaya. And so he uh, arrived to the church that was there, the front of missions had helped build, and he asked for help. The people at the church didn't have anything to financially, economically to help them, but they say, what we can do is we can pray for your sick child. So they did that, and the child got healed. And so the men asked who helped start this church here in Pacaya. And that's when they gave Alan's winter name. This miracle opened the door for Frontline to work with the Tolopan in the remote mountains of Honduras. Many centuries ago, Tolopan people fled their homes on the coast of Honduras and hid in the mountains in fear of oppression and enslavement from outsiders. Today, the Tolopan live secluded from society, forgotten by government, and suffer from extreme poverty. The next I knew was that Alan found somebody that could take him to the Tolopan people. In 2006, Frontline sent its first team to this remote region called Flower Mountain. Actually, Redeemer was the first team that went up to the Tolopans. And we did a medical clinic, and people were tense. There were people with machetes, dart guns, and we were sitting there thinking like, Whoa, are we in the right place? And we were uncomfortable because we did not want to cause any problems. The Tolopan tribal leaders forbade the frontline team from sharing the gospel, praying, or taking pictures. The Tolopan women and children hid themselves out of fear, while the men watched from afar. The frontline team soon noticed that at Flower Mountain, children did not laugh and babies did not cry. During one of the clinics, it happened that Betty Gustafson, one of our oldest missionary that was coming, was holding a baby for one of the patients. And he was, she was just bouncing him. And the next thing you know, he wet her dress. He just went. And, uh, and she was so amazed. But she laughed it off because she's that kind of a person. She said, oh, well, he had to go. And the people around saw it. And they started giggling and laughing. And that's the first time we saw the toes laughing. And that broke the ice. Alan felt that that was the moment that they welcomed us and thought of us that we were friends. Suddenly, the ice was broken, and the leaders of the community began allowing the team to pray for people and share the gospel. Then, another monumental event took place. And uh, we decided to go one more uh, trip out. While we are gone, uh, a monsoon hit. So we got in the truck try to head back to our base camp and we had to cross the river to get to where we're at. So Alan said we need to pray that the river will go down. Uh, so we prayed and the river went down. After seeing God's miraculous intervention, the Tolupan asked for line to build the church in La Cebita. However, just when the Tolupan seemed to be opening up to the gospel, violence began escalating on Flower Mountain. It reached such a dangerous point that one of our international partners, Pastor Ruiz, was held up at that point by a group of bandits on his way up to the mountain. 
a la montaña en la flor donde están los tulupanes. En el trayecto del camino una señora con cuatro niños me pidió que si la podía montar en mi carro y llevarla hasta cierto lugar del camino hacia la montaña en la flor. En el trayecto del camino habían seis personas con AK-47 esperándome a mí para hacerme maldad, daño. Me encañonaron con las AK-47 y abrieron la puerta del carro apuntándome en mi cabeza y parte del cuerpo. Pero cuando la señora vio que el carro no circulaba, ella se puso de pie porque venía sentada en la paila del carro, que cuando ella volteó a ver a las seis personas, dejaron de encañonarme con las AK-47 y lo quisieron salir de huida para el monte a esconderse. And when he got stopped by those men, the lady stood up and she seems to know them and they just didn't do anything. And he was able to keep going. And other things happened here, so we cannot have to stop coming here for a certain time. Finally, the time came that we were able to come back. And when we came back, the chief from the Tolpan, from this area, he came and welcomed us, and he gave his hand to Alan. And uh, the guy turned to him and says, you speak to your God and the rivers obey. The story of Alan and us praying in the rivers going down has spread through the entire area. And now, your God listens to your prayers and the rivers obey. You might not understand why this was a big deal for us, because previously when we'll come, we'll talk to the chief, it will be like something between us. He will not talk directly to us. And we give something to him as a gift, for us presenting him a gift, we have to give it to Tomas, who was the second chief, and he will give it to him. But he have to clean it up and give it to him. But when we came back, he just came and just shakes Alan's hand and they just welcomed us. With this unexpected welcome, Frontline began building relationships with Tolupan across the region. Over the next few years, Flower Mountain communities welcomed Frontline's medical, dental, and construction teams, including in villages previously unseen by outsiders. Frontline began serving the Tolupan people through a variety of projects that helped improve living conditions, such as a coffee co-op, which allowed farmers to sell their coffee to outside markets, beat project that helped women make and sell handmade jewelry, the provision of school supplies and health care, and the distribution of solar-powered MP3 players that contained gospel stories in Paul, the native language. Through these intentional acts of love, that softened the hearts of the people. In 2015, through the generosity of frontline supporters and the concerned effort of previously divided communities, a pipeline was built to distribute fresh water among many villages. At its dedication, Chief Alvaro said in Toll, Jesus is the only way to God. Many others have similarly embraced the gospel and advanced his kingdom in the mountains of Honduras.